Welcome to Deckmaster, where any deck can be waterproofed, look beautiful, and provide a protected living area beneath. Deckmaster's durable all-weather vinyl system can be used for a variety of surfaces, like boats, docks, and walkways. But most commonly, it's used for pedestrian decks, multifamily balconies, rooftop decks, and boathouses. When you're a factory trained by Ducan, we offer a 10-year limited warranty on flaws and manufacturer defects. Deckmaster provides a practical waterproofing solution and long-wearing textured surface, all in one quality product. Whether the project is a renovation or a new construction, Ducan's 20 plus years of experience lets your customer know they are receiving the best quality vinyl system on the market. Deckmaster 60mm Vinyl is Canadian General Standards Board certified. The CGSB is a federal government organization offering client-centered, comprehensive standards development and conformity assessment services in support of the economic, regulatory, procurement, health, safety and environmental interests. Deckmaster 60mm Vinyl is also Canadian Construction Materials Centre approved. The CCMC is part of the National Research Council of Canada. It offers the construction industry a national evaluation service for innovative, non-standardized materials, products, systems and services in all types of construction. Our testing and ratings meet and exceed all North American building requirements. Deckmaster Vinyl has been meticulously treated to resist mold and mildew and has been UV stabilized to resist premature fading. Deckmaster is low maintenance, requiring only minimal cleaning to keep the surface looking its best. Deckmaster is the ultimate solution for creating practical and attractive decking above and watertight protection for the living area or storage space below. Temperatures between 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and 35 degrees Celsius, 95 degrees Fahrenheit, are best when using Deckmaster Pro Exterior Adhesive. For Deckmaster water-based adhesive, wait until the weather is consistently 15 degrees Celsius, 59 degrees Fahrenheit, with no freezing overnight. For all installations, the plywood must have no more than 12% moisture. Before installing Deckmaster, the substructure must be solid and meet all building codes. Floor joists should be 16 inches on center and 3 quarter to 5 eighths inch tongue and groove fir or spruce plywood should be installed. The plywood should be properly prepared by gluing and screwing it in place with treated deck screws. The plywood should be staggered and should be screwed in place every 6 inches around perimeter and 12 inches on the center joists. Be sure to properly countersink all screws. If using existing plywood, it should be smooth, in new condition, and must be free of checking and rot. With any deck guard deck installation, there should be a slope of at least 1 inch and 10 feet. Once the condition of the substrate is passed inspection by the contractor, the deck must be fitted with galvanized flashings. This assists in properly shedding water from the deck surface. Starting at the deck perimeter, fit the non-return galvanized flashing on the deck edge and place a spacer of 1 8 of an inch under the flashing to deck. This is to give the flashing room for expansion and contraction and helps prevent the flashing from warping. Once the perimeter of the deck has been fitted with a flashing, mark an outline in pencil. With a planer, Set at a depth of 1 16th of an inch, plane the area of the deck to the pencil line. This will provide a pocket for the flashing to sit flush with the deck surface. This professional detail helps prevent potential water buildup on the perimeter of the deck. For any area that a planer cannot be used, chiseling may be required. If splinters have formed during planing, be sure to sand these areas prior to reinstalling the flashing. Clean the deck of debris. Once the deck is clean, fit the perimeter flashings in place. Using a nail gun, install galvanized nails every four to six inches, starting from the center of the flashing and working your way to the ends. For perimeter posts that interfere with the flashing, be sure to mark and cut these areas to fit. 
For perimeter corners, cut the flashing so they wrap easily. Building code requires the vinyl be installed up the wall 6 to 8 inches. A 3 by 3 inch, 90 degree galvanized flashing should be installed at the building. If siding is present, it must be removed, then the flashing installed. For a brick building, the flashing can be used up against brick and the vinyl installed over. More flashing must be installed over the vinyl. Install the flashing to the wall. Mark all areas to be trimmed using a pencil. Trim angles and corners and nail to the deck. It is an option to also nail the flashing to the building. Now that the deck has been flashed, check one more time that the deck is clean. Be sure to pay close attention to the plywood seam areas to make sure they are clear of debris. Once the deck is clean, the Deck Master deck patch can be prepared. Be sure to follow all label instructions. Add the deck patch to a clean bucket and add water. Mix the product to a thick milkshake consistency. The deck patch will dry fairly quickly, so it is best to prepare small amounts at a time. Fill all plywood seams, scraping any excess off the deck surface to prevent buildup. Fill all screw holes and imperfections. The deck patch does not stick well to metal surfaces. Because the flashings have been installed to be flush with the deck surface, it is an option to fill these transitions. If filling this area, be sure to only overlap slightly over the flashings, as the filler is not compatible with metal. After the patching compound has completely dried, use a belt sander and sand the deck surface until flush. Once completely sanded, clean the plywood of dust and inspect the deck for imperfections. It is important to remove any foreign materials, imperfections, popping nails or screws prior to installing the vinyl. Make sure all nails on the flashings are flush with the surface. Prior to installing the vinyl, Brush Deckmaster Pro Adhesive using a 3-inch brush suitable for solvent paints onto the flashings and let dry. This is to prepare the flashing to adhere to the vinyl once all the vinyl runs have been installed on the substrate. The Deckmaster Pro Exterior Adhesive is a superior, solvent-based, fast-drying adhesive. If doing an interior sunroom or screen porch, where there is limited ventilation, our water-based adhesive should be applied. When using water-based adhesive, Solvent Pro Adhesive will need to be applied on the flashings or any vertical angles. Measure the deck for your first run of vinyl. Be sure to include measurements to go down the perimeter flashing on all sides. Measure the distance from the deck perimeter to fit the first run of vinyl. The vinyl is 72 inches wide, so taking into account the two inch flashing allowance, the pencil mark should be 70 inches from the deck edge. Use a chalk line to mark the plywood. Roll out the vinyl. Measure out the first piece. Mark with a pencil and using a straight edge, cut the run of vinyl.
Mark all areas of the vinyl so you know where the seam will be. Roll the vinyl with polyester facing outward. Re-roll it out onto the deck surface, being sure to follow the arrows on the back of the vinyl for proper direction. Be sure there is enough vinyl to go down the flashing on all sides. Pay close attention to line up the vinyl to the chalk line, and then to hold the vinyl in place, use a staple gun to tack it down. Be sure to only tack the very edge of the vinyl where the seam will be. Puncturing this area will not jeopardize the integrity of the vinyl. These staples will be removed once the run of vinyl has been adhered to the deck surface, and this seam area will be hot air welded, sealing any punctures from the staples. Because of the shape of this deck, the vinyl must be trimmed to go around an outside corner. Be sure to line up the vinyl, making it square with the corner. Measure and cut at a 45 degree angle. This will allow the vinyl to fall around the outside corner. Prior to cutting, always be sure to use a scrap piece of plywood and place under the vinyl, so the vinyl below does not accidentally get cut. The vinyl should now easily fall into place around the outside corner. When existing posts are present, relief cuts must be made so the vinyl run falls around the post. With a full post, there will be a relief cut to the edge of the deck. This will later need to be hot air welded. Cut the vinyl around the base of the post on all sides. You will now have a complete fit with the relief cut still open to the outside edge of the deck. For existing notch posts that cannot be removed prior to installing the vinyl, relief cuts will also need to be made. After the initial cut, trim the vinyl around all edges of the base of the post, and do finishing after all the vinyl on the deck has been installed. The first run of vinyl is now laid out onto the deck ready for installation. Use masking tape to temporarily hold vinyl up any exterior walls. Run a piece of waxed paper down onto the vinyl to protect the membrane underneath prior to using adhesive. Pull the vinyl back on itself and adhere one half of the vinyl run at a time. Notice how the vinyl edge lays onto the wax paper. This is to protect the vinyl beneath when applying adhesive. For vinyl installation, you will need a 6 mil roller sleeve, roller cage with extension pole, and a 3 inch paintbrush suitable for solvent paint. For application, the roller can be dipped directly into the 5 gallon container of Pro Exterior Adhesive and applied. Apply to the back of the vinyl first, as it is slower to dry on the polyester than on the plywood surface. There should be a thin, even coat. Do not drench the vinyl or directly pour adhesive onto the polyester, as this will make the vinyl more susceptible to solvent blisters. Always be sure to use a brush to get adhesive under the vinyl fold area. If left uncoated, it can lead to a long strip of vinyl with no adhesive. Solvents will collect under this area and there will be a permanent bubble, which is difficult to repair. After the adhesive has been completed on the back of the vinyl, start application of adhesive on the plywood surface Again, applying a complete, even coat. Wait until the adhesive is tacky, which can be very quick if the weather is warm. Typical drying time is between 10 and 15 minutes. Push the vinyl down onto the plywood and use your hands to smooth it down. As an option, a wallpaper smoothing tool may be used to push the vinyl tight to the substrate and transition. Once down, remove the wax paper and prepare the other half of the vinyl for adhesion by pulling out any staples that have been used. Fold the vinyl back in the other direction and apply the Pro Exterior Adhesive. Check again that the fold area has been completely coated with adhesive and apply more if needed. Coat the back of the vinyl and the deck surface with the adhesive, then push the vinyl down onto the deck surface. Always take precaution when applying adhesive and when needed, protect the vinyl with waxed paper or a drop cloth. 
Finish applying adhesive to the back side of the vinyl and the plywood or wall. Wait until tacky, then remove the waxed paper and finish installing the vinyl. Against the wall area, be sure to install the vinyl securely to the deck-to-wall transition. Use the wallpaper tool to get tight to the corner-to-wall area. To fully secure the vinyl to the wall, use the wallpaper tool and hot air gun roller to help smooth the vinyl down. The first run of vinyl is now complete. For preparation of all consecutive runs of vinyl, the seam must be prepared. It is important to use good one inch masking tape. Start by taping the installed vinyl edge. This will be used as a guide to line up where the next run of vinyl should be placed. Roll out the second run and lead the edge of the vinyl to the full width of the masking tape. Pull it back and place more masking tape on the polyester side of the vinyl. This is to protect the vinyl seam area from adhesive. This seam will be hot air welded once the vinyl has been adhered to the deck. This is a mandatory step. If this step is overlooked and the adhesive is applied to an open seam area, the hot air welding process will not work and the vinyl seam will be compromised. Once the tape has been prepared, adhesive can once again be applied. Install the vinyl one half at a time. Once this side is completed, remove the pieces of masking tape. To be sure the vinyl is adhered near the masking tape, roll close to it by using the hot air welding roller. Again, prepare the other side of the vinyl by installing waxed paper and tape in place. Again, pay special attention to the fold area to make sure there is adhesive in this area. Apply the adhesive to the vinyl and then to the plywood and wall. If there is a door frame, coat all lower areas of the door sill with adhesive for the vinyl to adhere to the inside frame. This detail will be finished after all the vinyl has been installed. Install the remainder of the vinyl to the plywood and wall area. First cut directly out from the deck corner. If more adhesive is needed under the vinyl, do that now. Be sure the adhesive is tacky before installing. Push the vinyl down on the flashing. At the outside corner, tuck one piece of vinyl under the other. Be sure to have the seam in direct line with the corner edge. Continue installing the vinyl to the flashing, making sure to create crisp, clean edges as you go. Now slice the excess vinyl from the bottom of the flashing. If a post is present, trim and remove the excess vinyl from the base. Once all the vinyl is adhered to the deck perimeter, all other detailing work can begin. When using a hot air welding gun, use a temperature setting of 8 or 9 for under the seam and 6 or 7 for the final seam edge finishing. Be sure to do one or two passes under the vinyl overlap prior to doing the final finishing pass in the seam edge.
It is critical to get a rounded edge to the seam's finishing edge so it blends into the vinyl beneath. There should be no gaps at the seam area. A slim white line should be present. As an option, a penny roller may be used for the final pass in place of the silicone roller. Be sure to weld the seams up the wall. Always do a final check to see that the seams are well adhered. After the vinyl has cooled, use your fingernail to check the vinyl edge. If it can be pulled up, it will need to be re-welded. For the outside deck perimeter, hot air weld at the corners. The seam line should be directly below the corner's edge. For the relief cut at the post, cut a small piece of vinyl to go over the cut. This should be enough vinyl for a one inch overlap on either side of the cut. Tape it temporarily while hot air welding it in place. To install the U-channel fastener over the vinyl covered flashing, start by installing one end of the U-channel, then gradually clip it on all the way down to the other end. To make a smooth transition around deck corners, mark off where the corner will be on the back side of the U-channel. Then, make a relief cut on the back of the U-channel. To make it easier to wrap the corner, a low temperature on the hot air gun helps. Direct the nozzle at the U-channel relief cut to slightly soften it. This makes it easier to wrap the corner. For inside corners, install the vinyl tightly to the corner. You will be left with excess vinyl. Place the hot air welding gun inside the ear and weld it together to make it flat. Pull the dog ear to one side and weld it tightly to the wall. If it is too difficult to get into the corner transition, a damp cloth or the penny roller can be used. For the outside corner area, a template can be made. Wax paper can be used to trace the area. Be sure to make it bigger by one inch to account for the overlapping seam. A tail will need to be made at the end of the triangle for the deck transition. On the back of the cut vinyl, draw a pencil line one inch around the perimeter. This is your seam area. Apply adhesive to the vinyl piece, excluding the seam area. Be sure both the vinyl backing and the wall have adhesive, and prior to installing, be sure the adhesive and wall are tacky. Apply the vinyl triangle to the open area on the corner and smooth down. Hot air weld the triangle to the wall. For any tight angles, you can use a damp rag or a penny roller with the hot air gun. Make a relief cut on the tail to go around the corner, adhere to the wall securely, and continue to weld. For the relief cut, slice a small piece of vinyl to cover it. Leave enough room to overlap on either side. Temporarily tape it in place and hot air weld completely.
At the door sill, use a utility knife and cut the vinyl to fit the edges of the door frame. Adhere the vinyl onto the base of the door sill and smooth down tightly. Cut two pieces of vinyl, five inches by five inches. These will cover the edges of the door frame. Be sure to mark one left and one right and leave a one inch space on the edges for hot air welding. Make a small pencil line where the relief cut will be. Brush with solvent adhesive, again avoiding the one inch seam area. Let the pieces become tacky, then adhere them to the edges of the door frame one at a time. You can pre-cut the relief cut or make it as you go. Wrap the corner and weld the piece in place. Repeat the process on the other side of the door frame. The relief cuts must be covered with a separate piece of vinyl. Cut a small triangle piece to cover the relief, hold with tape, and weld in place, being sure to weld all open edges securely. For an existing notched post, caulk all edges around the post using Deckmaster caulking. There is no warranty on this type of post install. The caulking must be checked yearly for leaking. Reinstall any U-channel trim close to the caulked area. For an existing 4x4 or 6x6 post, the post must be wrapped. Measure 8 inches up the post and mark it with a pencil line. If not using pre-cut post boots, cut a piece of vinyl to wrap the existing post completely. Be sure to leave an extra one inch for the overlapping seam. The vinyl post wrap should be cut nine inches long to go up the post eight inches. The extra inch is for the base of the post. This seam area will require relief cuts. Apply Deck Master adhesive to the vinyl wrap, being sure not to get adhesive in the seam area. Then apply Deck Master adhesive to the post up to the pencil line. Once the adhesive is tacky, begin wrapping the post with the vinyl one side at a time. Be sure to leave the bottom one inch to go onto the deck surface. Push the vinyl onto the post. Using the hot air roller works well. As you wrap, make relief cuts at every post corner and continue wrapping and adhering the vinyl to the post. You will now be left with the overlapping edge. Hot air weld the seam on the post. Then hot air weld the bottom of the vinyl flap to the deck. All relief cuts will need to be covered. Cut small triangle pieces larger than the relief cuts. Hold in place with masking tape and weld completely on every corner. After the post has been wrapped, use tuck tape and cover the post's exposed edges. For decks that require a drain, determine the correct placement on the deck and be sure there is proper slope to the drain area and that placement is between the joists. Cut a hole in the deck with a six inch hole saw. Sweep the area clean of sawdust. Remove the plate screws and center of the drain and store in a safe place until ready to reinstall. You will need this once the vinyl is in place. Using a piece of masking tape will help keep all items from getting misplaced. Place the drain into the hole and with a pencil, trace around the perimeter flange. Remove the drain and using an angle grinder, Sand down within the perimeter pencil line one quarter inch so the drain fits flush with the deck surface. A 
Again, clean the area of sawdust. Using construction adhesive, apply a liberal bead of adhesive to the inclined area. Tighten the gear clamp and insert the drain, embedding it into the adhesive. Reinsert the screws into the drain plate. Be sure the drain is flush, using a level. Only use Deckmaster solvent-based pro-adhesive on the drain area, as metal is not compatible with water-based adhesives. Continue to install vinyl over the drain. Once the vinyl is over the drain, use the hot air welding roller to secure the vinyl to the drain area. Using a utility knife, cut the center of the drain hole to open it. Cut the circular area, exposing the screw hole tabs. Reinsert the drain plate and screw into place. Place the drain grate lining up screw holes, and screw in place. Continue installing vinyl as usual. If the deck is new construction and the walls will not be immediately finished, cover the exposed vinyl edges with tuck tape to keep water from intruding. The deck is now complete and watertight. Avoid heavy objects like barbecues, deck furniture, and heavy flower pots for 24 hours until the adhesive has cured. Light walking is permitted. For maintenance of the vinyl membrane, we recommend cleaning at minimum twice yearly. This requires a broom, water, and a compatible cleaner. If using a power washer, we recommend a power washer with a rating lower than 2500 PSI and to avoid directing the nozzle at any seam areas. Never use harsh cleaners with bleach and never use solvents. Both of these items can prematurely fade or remove the surface of the vinyl. Consult our website for cleaning specific items from the vinyl surface. As a general cleaner, we recommend the Duke all-purpose cleaner and degreaser, Dawn dish soap or other mild dish soap with degreaser, or TSP. For further information or questions, please contact the Ducan office at one 800-943-8226